Previously, I solved, uh, I found this integral by considering a recurrence. So integrating pi parts twice, and then obviously rearranging until I got the integral again, and then equating it to whatever was there. Now I'm going to show you a different approach to solving this question. Now this question is not in the four-unit syllabus. It's actually an alternative method, and it's probably now considered to be in second year um, higher mathematics uh, in complex analysis. But that's more for later years. For now, I just need to introduce this formula to you, which is called Euler's formula, which simply states that the exponential of ix is equal to cos of x plus i sine of x. The mathematician Leonard Euler found this in, I suppose, the late 1700s or early 1800s. I'm not absolutely sure. But he found this by considering power series expansions. Not that I don't mean anything to you at the moment. Now, we're going to integrate e to the x cos of x plus i sine of x, assuming that we can integrate complex numbers. Now, this expression here will be equal to this, e to the x times e to the i x, since e to the i x equals cos of x plus i sine of x by Euler's, Euler's formula. Now, e to the x times e to the i x is equal to e to the x plus i x, okay, using the simple um, ident exponential identities. Now, pulling out x gives us e to the x times 1 plus i. Now, assuming we can integrate complex numbers, we divide, if, it's, if the integral of an exponential times a constant, obviously in the exponential itself, um, is, is being um, calculated, you divide by that constant and then add, a constant, uh, add another constant, to uh, a constant of integration to evaluate that integral. So, for example, e to the x times 1 plus i is evaluated as 1 over 1 plus i e to the x times 1 plus i plus a constant c0, say. Now, we want to realize this denominator. At this point here, we multiply by top and bottom by 1 minus i. This gives us 1 minus i on 2. Obviously, the, the denominator becomes the modulus of 1 plus i squared. Here, the modulus of 1 plus i is root 2 squared becomes 2. Times exponential of x cos of x plus i sine of x plus c0, where c0 is a complex constant. Of course, c0 can take into value. Now, at this point here, we want to separate out that previous integral into two separate integrals so we can, we can consider real and imaginary parts. So e to the x times cos of x plus i sine of x becomes x of x times cos of x dx, the integral of that, plus i times the integral of e to the x sine of x dx. And this is equal to a half e to the x, 1 minus i cos of x plus i sine of x, plus a constant 0. Just simplifying the, the, the expression in the previous um, part. Now, equating real parts on both left-hand side and right-hand side gives us, on the left-hand side, the integral of e to the x cos x dx. Obviously, since this integral here is real, this becomes the imaginary part, since it's only multiplied by i. So the real part of this integral becomes e to the x cos of x dx. Okay? Here, I haven't actually shown that we can, we can integrate these complex numbers without any proof, but we can assume that we can, simply because I know we can. Now, on the right-hand side, the real part becomes the real part here multiplied by the real part there, and the imaginary part here multiplied by the imaginary part there. So, the real part times the real part here gives us cos of x, which is that expression there. Now, the imaginary part, which is minus 1, times sine of x gives us minus sine x. Now we need to negate that since it's being i times i, which gives us sine x there. So essentially what we're doing is minus i times i sine of x, which gives us minus minus sine of x, which of course two negatives cancel, gives us sine of x. So we have half e to the x cos x plus sine x as our real part on the right hand side. Now we need to take the real part of c0 as well. Since I said that c0 was a complex constant, the real part of c0, we're going to let equal to C1, say, okay, where I've mentioned it here, where C1 equals the real part of C0. And so we end up with the integral, e to the x, the integral of e to the x cos x dx equals a half e to the x cos x plus sine x plus constant. 